Phytochemicals, the new vitamins. This is Jack Brooke from Columbia George Community College. In this session, what I'd like to discuss are the non-nutrients. These are chemicals that are in food that do not fit into a nutrition category. They're not a classification of a nutrient, but they are in foods um, and they are an important key to health. So with that, let me introduce phytochemicals. These are chemicals that come from plants. Phyto means plant. And so they're chemicals only found in plant products. Now, animal products have their own type of chemicals called zoochemicals. They haven't been as well researched, but they are finding some of those are, again, uh, key to health, and they are important in an overall diet. But uh, the main function of phytochemicals is not to keep you alive. Uh, they are not like a vitamin or a mineral that are necessary for everyday activities of your body in metabolism. Uh, there are people who are comatose that are on formulas that do very well uh, with just vitamins and amino acids and the minerals and carbohydrates and things for energy. But the phytochemicals are very important for protection, preventative uh, means that uh, decrease the risk of cell damage that could lead to cancer, heart disease, osteoporosis, and so forth. Uh, we've known for a long time that populations consuming a plant-based diet uh, have low risk of some of the major health problems that we have in this country and only when we have increased consumption of food and increased consumption of animal-based products versus plant-based products uh, that we get into these situations where heart disease and cancer and, and osteoporosis and so forth are a major concern. So the rule of thumb is uh, in your everyday diet you should have about 60 percent plant-based food intake and 40% animal based and in this country we're about reversed uh, of that we get about 60% of our protein intake basically from animal sources and 40% from plants so there's some changes we need to make but we discussed those earlier in one of my earlier sessions about the need for increasing plant products in our diet uh, with that, I'd like to just start out and look at some different phytochemicals. Now, we're not going to be able to address them all, but I want to just go through and mainly give you um, two things to think about that we've already discussed earlier. Number one, uh, variety. Uh, variety is the idea that you need to get different types of foods in your diet for uh, different reasons and also uh, moderation of things but uh, let's first of all just just go through and look at some of the phytonutrients and phytochemicals uh, I call them phytonutrients because sometimes you'll hear that um, or read it in a newspaper or some article calling them phytonutrients but they really are not considered a nutrient they are a chemical uh, but as we go through I just want to uh, introduce uh, some of these just to give you the idea of how important they are and what their roles are uh, in activity. Uh, phytoestrogens, um, I'll give you some examples. You may have heard flavonoids, isoflavones. Um, sometimes if you're really into nutrition and supplements you'll see that these can be purchased as supplements. I don't recommend that but uh, they are available. Their main activity is as a uh, detoxification, detoxification of carcinogens. Uh, de detoxification can come in many forms. Uh, number one, it could be something like an antagonist that uh, would bind on to the carcinogen and not allow it to work. It could um, render the carcinogen uh, neutral. Uh, that kind of thing. So that's what we mean when we talk about detoxification. Uh, estrogen antagonists, it's uh, long been long known that uh, excess estrogen can increase the risk of breast cancers and endometrial cancers. And so uh, these are antagonists to that. Uh, main thing meaning that it's going to interfere with estrogen by tying up estrogen receptors that are on the cells. 
of uh, again breast cancer, breast cells and uh, endometrial cells, and so they will bind to those receptors. So estrogen has no access. Women tend to produce more estrogen than they need, um, and uh, I'm not sure exactly why, but uh, any excess estrogen can increase the uh, speed of tumor formation. Uh, it doesn't necessarily cause cancer, but if you do have cancer, it can increase the speed of growth of that tumor. Um, and so these can inhibit the estrogen stimulated uh, types of cancer growth. Uh, main food sources, legumes, soybeans, uh, whole grains, um, so uh, they're not recommended to be taken as a supplement, so I wouldn't go out and purchase flavonoids or isoflavones or lignans uh, in, you know, in a bottle form. You need to get them from food because there is a synergism. Uh, one thing about nutrition, you need to understand there are synergists, meaning that there are uh, th other things in foods that work with these chemicals that help them work. And so they kind of work together. Uh, and so it's, it's better to get these from real food. So uh, there has been a promotion of legumes, soybeans. But again, getting too much of these can be a problem. Um, I've heard uh, talk from other, you know, from physicians that eating too many legumes can um, introduce too many estrogen type you know, plant estrogens that can have an effect on um, some of the hormones, especially in males. It can increase estrogen uh, type activity, which could uh, increase the risk of growing uh, breasts and that kind of thing if, if they get a lot. But there are some people that go overboard and instead of just following, you know, moderation, they will uh, just feed their kids or eat themselves too many legumes, too many soybeans. Um, you know, especially soybeans uh, can can have a, an effect on health. So, again, moderation comes into key. Uh, but uh, when we talk about estrogen antagonists and detoxification of carcinogens and you see that there's three I just listed three types and there's many more types than this so that's why uh, you don't just rely on soybeans to get your phytoestrogens you need legumes you need a variety you need your whole grain so all of those collectively uh, and uh, getting that variety is very important within this category Another one is uh, phenols, uh, and I give you the different types. It's not so important, the types, but um, again, there's several different kinds of, of phenols. Um, they um, they uh, have been known, uh, excuse me, they, they have found 8,000 different types of uh, phenols. And so uh, you can't just get all of them from one type of food. Uh, they are antioxidants, which basically means that they are going to um, protect your body and your cells from free radicals. And free radicals are when you have an unstable uh, atom that is short an electron, so it becomes very reactive. And so it'll start stealing electrons from other molecules, and this can over time lead to cell damage and breakdown in the cell membrane. It can attack lipids and proteins and RNA and DNA. Um, and our body naturally produces antioxidants. We can breathe them as smoking. You will breathe. You will be breathing in free radicals, but we naturally we can. Uh, um, eat them and we can get them in everyday activities, polluted areas, you know, pr breathing in polluted air and that kind of thing. You can breathe in free radicals. But our body um, on a normal basis produces free radicals um, because the, especially like superoxide free radicals can uh, destroy bacteria and viruses. So they're necessary for us. Uh, and then we have some metabolic reactions that are uh, require them.
But the problem is, is when we give an overabundance of these free radicals and it causes what's called oxidative stress uh, or a, a reactive oxygen species and it can start damaging good things. And so what we need the uh, we need the antioxidants to combat and stabilize these free excess free radicals uh, by scavenging them. So that's the reason for an antioxidant. You've heard a lot about antioxidants with vitamin C, maybe in vitamin E, but phytochemicals are just as important, if not more important than those. Uh, they will also induce detoxification enzymes, which basically means they don't det detoxify, but they will increase your immune system and increase the um, metabolic activities that to detoxify uh, enzymes that can lead to cell damage and things like that. Um, food sources that are high in these, now I just gave you a few, but what you're looking for is uh, color again, uh, blueberries and grapes and raspberries and red peppers and those kinds of things are very high in phenols of the different kinds. Uh, capsicum is the hot part of pepper, you know, hot peppers and Chinese food and things like that. So. Um, these are very important to get these in your diet. Again, a variety of these, um, you know, grape juice and, you know, the wine, you know, you've heard a lot about wine and how it's uh, healthy, you know, especially the red wine. Well, it's not the alcohol in the wine as much as it is the color or the phenols that are in the skins of the grapes. Uh, and But you can get the same thing from grape juice. Um, and the the blue of blueberries, the red of raspberries, the red of peppers, and those kinds of things are high in phenols, and so they're going to be very important um, for uh, to reduce the risk of oxidation and free radicals and things like that. So very important for health and preventative me mechanisms for health. Uh, carotenoids, you probably heard of beta carotene. Uh, lutein, lycopene, um, those types of, of uh, things you've heard advertisements uh, about those. Uh, but um, high in antioxidants, again, the same type of thing, antioxidants are free radicals, but they are different antioxidants. They work differently uh, and have a different aspect to neutralize uh, free radicals. Um, and food sources, again, very colorful foods, yellows and oranges, reds uh, of fruits and vegetables, uh, very important tomatoes and carrots and uh, squash, uh, those kinds of things, uh, pumpkin, uh, very high in carotenoids, and so they would be um, very important to to add or include in your diet uh, on a daily basis. So once again, what we're thinking is we're eating close to the earth and we're eating to color. Uh, that's that's our goal here. Uh, terpenes, uh, you've heard of limonene from citrus fruits and, and those kinds of things. They also have anti-cancer activities, so they will to help to detoxify some of the carcinogens and things, but uh, garlic and cherries and citrus oils, you know, garlic wouldn't have the limonene in it, but the per, uh, perillial um, alcohol uh, they would have, so, and the cherries and things like that, so they're very important. Uh, uh, organosulfurs, another group, is uh, important for detoxifying uh, uh, carcinogens they can help uh, prevent maybe you've heard of nitrates and nitrites that can form into nitrosamines in the large intestines by bacteria um, these are items that you'd find in bacon uh, that and uh, sausages um, they do two things they keep the color uh, of red in meats and they also can prevent um, Clostridium botulinum from growing, and so, uh, but if you eat a lot of them, they can form those nitrosamines. But uh, organosulfurs can kind of help protect from those. 
Uh, cruciferous vegetables, these would be vegetables that uh, their blossom is shaped like a crucifix. So uh, we were thinking of broccoli and cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, uh, cabbage, uh, those kinds of things would be cruciferous vegetables. And then as well as leeks, onions, and garlic are high in these. So very important parts of our diet. Uh, phytosterols. Um, and I give you two types, uh, decreased colon cancer promoters. In, the, in cancer, we have uh, promoters that encourage the growth of tumors. They will encourage the speed of cell division, uh, but they can also encourage uh, carcinogens to be able to get into cells easier and those kinds of things. They don't really cause the cancer, but they promote the uh, the uh, excess and, and, and fast growth of cells and they promote the ability of carcinogens to cause cancer and they can also help in decreasing cholesterol but uh, nuts and seeds and vegetable oils and things like that are, are what would have phytosterols uh, in them that kind of thing so uh, you know, looking at these phytochemicals, what I'm, I'm trying to stress is, number one, the variety. As you can see, the different types of foods, the, the fruits and vegetables and um, nuts and seeds and legumes, uh, all of those uh, have different kinds of phytochemicals in them, and they have a specific purpose and a, a specific uh, factor that can decrease the risk of disease. Uh, once again, these are not important for normal everyday activities for life, but they're very important to reduce the risk of heart disease. And the problem is we're not getting enough of these plant foods in our diet. We are um, limited in our diet. One of the um, issues in, in the questions that might be asked is, well, how much of these do we need? Well, the rule of thumb is to follow the guidelines from uh, the governmental uh, standards is that you're going to have five servings of vegetables and four servings of fruit, so nine servings of fruit and vegetables per day, so about a half a cup is a serving. So um, we are only in this country getting about one serving of fruit a day and maybe a serving and a half of vegetables. So we really need to increase that a lot. Um, you know, again, five servings of vegetables, so half a cup is a serving and um, four servings of fruits with about a half a cup or a medium sized fruit uh, being a serving. Um, so we really, really need to increase these. We need to, within each group, you know, you can't get all of your phytochemicals from just carrots. We need to eat all of the different colorful foods. So when you're shopping, you want to shop to color uh, and get it the brightest colored fruits and vegetables that you possibly can, eating the skin. You know, if you eat an apple and you peel the apple, you're losing a lot of phytochemicals. Uh, plus the fiber that's in there that we uh, that you know about. So very important. I can't uh, emphasize enough how important it is that we could de decrease some of these uh, major health diseases if we would just eat to color and eat closer to the earth and eat a lot more plant foods.